in Rhino, we're going to start drawing. We're going to look at the properties. There's so much in here for settings, but we want to first just check our grid so that we'll snap to one eighth of an inch when we're doing our drawing. So which screen do we use? The top view because the Y and the X are the same uh, configuration as our machine. X horizontal, Y vertical. Double click on the top and then you get just the top view you can work on. So to do a line, we click on line or polyline. Start in the center of the drawing. Click or type 000 if you want to do it by numerical. Down here are our snap points. We can click it uh, with the left mouse button for on or off and turn it all off by O snap and grid snap can be turned on and off. Ortho also is useful. It creates 90 degree lines and then planar. So with ortho everything's 90 degrees. Turn it off and if you want 90 degrees you gotta hold the shift key otherwise you get any angle that you draw. So we can type 6 inches Hold the shift key and click. We have a six inch line going up from the zero zero point. Let's do another line four inches to the right. Holding the shift key to make it ortho or 90 degrees. Now one inch, another one inch line. Now that we've got our lines, we need to make an arc. We can use arc start end with radius. There are other arc options in here, but we choose the one that we have the information for. In this case, we could do the start point, the end point, and the radius, and turn on the end snapping so it snaps clearly onto the end. You can type in a radius now of 12, and uh, just give it a click, and it makes our arc between those two points. Now the control points, when you click on the arc, you can manually drag it around and change the shape of your arc if you'd like. And another way of making an arc is to do the circle, where you use three points. You put your two on your ends and your third one just out someplace until it looks like a good arc or good shape for you. Then we can use the trim command where we use the trimming points and just leave the arc part that you want to keep. Now that we've drawn our single shape, I'm going to show a useful function called fillet. Now if I pull these lines apart and I wanted to get them back together, I go up to Curve and find Fillet and the radius needs to be set to zero and just click on it and type the number zero. Then we click on each line and they come right together to close the curve. So now we've got a clean curve again. We're going to take this and select it, then go over to our array and use the radial. So we have a polar array. We snap a point and the number of items is two total, 180 degrees apart we type. So we can build our nested pair of moldings. We're going to move this and just click and snap from that end down to the grid up close to the other shape. We're going to repeat this process of snapping until we get nice and snug up against the other shape without going too close. And we don't waste too much foam this way. To connect the two we'll draw a simple line between them on the bottom. And then we'll need to do the offset so you'll see what we're doing here. We're going to pull it down below the main line but 
only five thousandths of an inch is enough. And then we'll delete the original line and do the fillet one more time. And delete this line so we simplify it just having one line across the entire bottom. Now we've got a nested pair. We still don't have our lead in lead out so right up here we can create a lead out and a lead in. Now remember we're using our control points by dragging control points up an eighth or a quarter of an inch we create our lead in and lead out to our shapes. If we uh, are going to connect this to some other shapes we'll have to do a traveler that comes off to the right hand side and connects to the next shape. Once we get our shape how we like it we join it and we will get our dimensions off of it. Moving it out of the way, we're going to build a, a, a workspace there with our foam blank, but we'll do our dimensions here on this side, five and a half inches. And the height is six, and uh, 0.13 would equal 125. It's just rounding up for us. Six and an eighth by five and a half. And now we type in a zero zero for a rectangle and 48 wide by 42 high for our foam block. There it is. So we're going to fill this out with our nested pair. So we'll copy and paste this. and then we'll move it up into the uh, block to build our array. So starting at the top left, we can figure our array. It's five and a half inches times eight would get us a little over 40 inches. For Y, we start with just one, and 5.5 .5 we enter for the distance there. This whole row can be joined into one part, and we'll want to draw our lines to connect the top row to the row beneath it. From this right hand side we just go down holding the shift key. Again we hold the shift key to make it straight. It brings us down to where our next row will start. We'll join these two together so it's all one connected curve and do our rectangular array. X is one for Y it's six. Z is one. The Y spacing minus 6.25 as you can see, it connects well. If we try 6.375, you'll notice it's a little bit of a gap, and so it doesn't automatically connect. So we'll go back to 6.25, negative 6.25. At the bottom here, where the wire will leave the block of foam, we want to explode that so we can uh, remove that last little segment this last horizontal will drag it out so the wire doesn't stay in the foam when it's done cutting. We'll select everything and join it. We can press the code button, save it to the code folder, and give it a name. So 
So it asks us on the command line to select the curves, press enter when done. You gotta enter to accept the settings and choose the direction. Just look at the start where it enters and then at the end where it exits to verify it's going the direction you intend. And then you can press the enter button. At this point, we've already saved the file. Turn off control points so it's not so crowded on the visual there. And then we open our job editor and we can open that file we just created. Let's maximize the view and turn on the stair step mode. And we can take a look at the sequence of the cut and it all looks quite good. So we'll be ready to print the barcode if we'd like. Go to file and print preview. Check the box for barcode and the job size. Type in any notes important to this particular job.